So No Man's Sky had a giant update, and if you're anything like me, you decided to give it another try. Maybe you haven't played it in another year or two, but uh, there's this problem that's just impossible to ignore. So a lot of people, and myself included, have encountered a major stuttering problem in the game. There's unexplainable lag spikes no matter what kind of PC build you have. So I've been scouring the internet for a couple days, and I think I found a very simple list on everything you can do to fix this problem. Over here, I've created a very simple list. It's a four-step process, and a couple of these you will already know. Maybe you've tried it yourself, but we're going to go ahead and do it anyways. So with the first thing I want you to try and do is try to change the task to high priority. Now all this simply means is going into your task manager, clicking on the No Man's Sky executable, go to details. And then from details, you'll go to set priority and then you'll set it to high. So that's step one. Everyone's very familiar with that kind of step. The next step, however, is to go into your advanced system settings. We're going to change one of the settings to select background services. I don't know why this is one of those unexplainable settings that just works for some people. Maybe it doesn't work for you. That's OK. We're going to add it to the list anyways and go through it. So to do this, you're going to go into your search bar and type advanced system settings and select the first option available. I am on Windows 11. I'm not sure how it would look for Windows 10 and before. So in the tab, we're going to go to advanced. And in the performance section, we're going to click on settings and there's another advanced tab we're going to click on. And for when it says adjust for best performance of, we're going to click to background services. By default, I believe most people have it on programs. Click background services. Like I said, I have no idea what this does, why it works, how someone found this out. Uh, but yeah, I think it's a good point to mention that a lot of these searches I found on Reddit. So if you want to see it for yourself or more detailed explanations, I'll link all the Reddits down below in the description. Once again, this is another thing I really can't explain for you. If you want to know the whys behind these fixes, I'm not that kind. And that guy. I'm just here to show you what I know and, and, and tell you that it works. All right. So take it with a great assault when I tell you that this is something that might work for you. It might not. I don't know. We'll see. You just have to try it out to see. So the next setting is to actually go into the game files itself and then change one of the property settings. So wherever your game is located, you're going to go to Steam Library, Steam Apps, Common. You're going to find your game file and then you're going to click on binaries. In binaries, click on settings and then the TK graphics. That, this is the text file that you'll want to access. You can either do control F or, you know, go all the way down until you find it. But you're looking for something called num low threads. For some reason, someone in Reddit has experimented with many different settings and they found that the only number that means anything is the num low threads value. And you have to put it at zero. This will eliminate almost all stuttering for most people. Not everyone. You know, it may not work for you. That's OK. This is just for most people. Now, keep Keep in mind, these settings, the game loves to reset back to its original default settings. At least it does for the num low thread. So the way to fix that after you input the zero value, go ahead and save the file. And then we're actually going to go into right click it and then we're going to do properties and then we're going to click on read only. This disables the game from reverting that option back to its original default number, whatever it was before you put in zero. Keep this in mind, though. This is very important. If you were to go into your game and change any graphic settings, you will have to uncheck mark read only on that setting, make your changes and then click on read only again. If you were to make any graphical changes while the read only box is checkmarked, it will not save your settings and you'll have to reset it again every time you load the game. I think now is also a good time to mention that all of these are just workarounds. They're not not fixes. The only way that this could be fixed is if the devs themselves fix this problem. However, moving on, we're going to go to the fourth and final step, the holy grail of scripts. Someone in Reddit decided to make a script to kind of work around and adjust for the problem. I don't know how it works, but someone figured out that the game does not use all cores efficiently. So they decided to create a script that I can't explain to you what it does, but I will leave the link in the description. You can read it all yourself. Maybe you'll understand it. I can't explain it. It just works. All right, so let's get into it. So in the Reddit that I'll have linked below, you'll find in the comment section, if you scroll down just a little bit, this person has created an executable script. What you're first going to do is actually open up Notepad. And when you have it open, copy everything in this entire gray box, all of it. We're going to copy and then paste it in here. Now, they do have some disclaimers if you read down just a little bit lower. Someone else mentioned that if you are using 32 cores or more, there is a couple things that you will have to change in the executable whenever you're uh, changing the launch settings of the game in Steam. It's not much. All right, you can read through this. This is very brief, very quickly. It's just changing system 32 to sys native. And then you're also going to change INT to INT 64. Those are it. Otherwise, for me, I'm only using 12 cores. So everything as is is 
perfect and it does not even need to be changed. So after you have it pasted into the text file, we're gonna go to file, save as, and then we're gonna go to nms.ps1. PS1 is just a format for the PowerShell script. It's how Windows runs executable files that you make, I think. I don't <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and name it nms.ps1 and we're gonna save it to, let's just say my desktop. Now this is part of the same step, but we're gonna go to your No Man's Sky game, click on properties, and in the launch options, there is another copy and paste thing. This is also found in the same Reddit as the script that I showed you. Right below it, you will see save to nms.ps1 file and change the launch options. Right here is what you will copy and paste and put into the launch options. But then there's another note right here. Wherever you have your file is what you need to copy and paste in this part in this portion of the text. What I mean by that is, for example, because it's just sitting on my desktop, whenever I copy and paste the modification into the launch option, I will have to account for where that file that I've created it is if I go to my desktop all you have to do is right click on that file and then you can actually copy it as path this will automatically copy its path and so all you'll have to do is wherever you have it in between these exclamation points that's where you will paste it now for me I actually just placed it in the exact same file as my game files so when I copy as path how it ends up looking is a little bit longer than what it may look for you after that you are free to click the X mark and the way that that script works it'll make a couple changes in how the game is launched and it will actually produce a few beeps. After the third beep, that's when you know the game will be ready to play. And just look at that. Buttery smooth, no more constant stuttering. Keep in mind when you do first load into the game, of course there will be some studying. It has to load in the world, give it a little bit of time. I don't have any recorded footage of how it looked before the fixes, but I am telling you right now, the difference is night and day. As I said multiple times, some of these fixes may not work for you. It's completely subjective, honestly, from what I've seen on Reddit. Nonetheless, I hope these fixes work for you. And if you enjoy, just consider subscribing. I don't usually post how-to videos, but this game is very near and dear to my heart because it's been sitting in my library for years and I've never been able to play it. I've always considered the lagging and the stuttering to be just game-breaking problems that made me just feel like I couldn't play the game at all. So I have avoided this game for years. After finally finding a fix, I'm very excited to play this game and see what it has to offer. Once again, thank you guys for being here. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, please let me know and have a good one.